I always teach, I always practice my messages on them. But yesterday, I think it was, we were sitting down, or, the, or, or, or Saturday, I think, or Friday, we were sitting down, Pastor Robert and I, with, with, a, with a gentleman who, who was, who was so, so much broken over his daughter. Wanting his daughter to be changed. She's addicted to meth, methamphetamine. And after he had left, Pastor Robert asked me a question. He says, how can, how can a person love drugs and alcohol and all those other things in life and, and, and sin, how can they love that more? And their own children. And yet, even more than God. And I said, you know what, brother? I said, the reason is, I said, is because they've never have experienced the love of God. You, you see, when, when you really experience the real love of Jesus, when you experience it, Nothing else will ever satisfy you again. You, you can try to fill your heart with all kinds of stuff or things, and it won't work. It, all it does is leave you empty. Because the only one that really satisfies is Jesus. He's the only one. And, and, and I'll tell you something. Uh, he is the ultimate, and and I and it's hard for me sometimes to understand why we would try to exchange the ultimate for something that doesn't really doesn't really fulfill life. Why would we want to exchange the ultimate for? It happens. It happens. I want you to go with me. Because we're talking about a relationship. A, a relationship that, that uh, should mean more to us than any other relationship. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, I believe that our, our relationship with Jesus Christ should mean more to us than any other relationship. And so I want you to go with me to the book of Psalms, and we're going to go to chapter 2. All right? And we're going to read two verses out of there. Two very powerful verses. And, and they're found in chapter 2, and it's verse 11 and 12. The Lord, you know, if you read that, that, that chapter, he's talking about the nations and how they come against him and how they assemble to take down who he is and, and, and try to destroy him and, and, and so forth. And and, and then he, he, he even gives us a description of who the Son is, who, who the Lord is. And he, and he talks there to the Son, and he, in verse 8 he tells the Son, Ask me, he says, and, and I will give you the nations as your inheritance. Ask of me, he says, and I'll give you the nations. I'll, 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 give, you every, I'll give you the world, everything. But in, in verse 11 and 12, he's talking to us, to every, every, every person that would encounter him. 
And this is, this is what the Lord says. He says it like this. He says, serve the Lord. What, a, what an awesome way to start this. He says, serve the Lord. With reverent awe. I mean, you know, you're, you're not serving a statue or a dead God or someone that can't help you or hear you. You're, 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 you're serving the creator of heaven and earth, of everything that exists. There's nothing, the Word of God says, that exists that He did not create. Everything. I don't know about you, but I know me, when I think about God, when I think how He could just speak things and things come into order. When I think about the Lord, and, I, and I, I see that there was no earth, there was no existence of a world, and yet He spoke it. There was nothing but darkness there. And yet He spoke it. He said, let there be an earth. And it came to be. Let me tell you something. He's a mighty God. And if you're going to give him praise, give him praise. And this God is so big, so powerful. He's ever present, ever knowing, and almighty. There's nothing greater than him, nothing more powerful than him, nothing that knows more than him. He is everything. And yet this God, this God, desires to have a, a powerful relationship with us with you and I. And, and you may be sitting here tonight saying, I already have a relationship with him. No, he wants you to have a better one. You see, you see, only religious people think they have it together. But see, when you have a relationship going, it's an everyday thing. It's not, it's not something you do once and then you think it's all right the rest of the time. It's, it's something you work at all the time. You seek Him always. And so, so look, look what He says here. Serve the Lord with reverent awe and worshipful fear. Rejoice and be in high spirits. What, what is high spirits? Does anybody know? Huh? How, how, many, how many of you know a while ago when you saw that the Broncos won, you were in high spirits? I told the girls a while ago, I went back there and I told them, I, I, well, I walked in there with a sad face. I said, the Broncos lost. No, they didn't. <laughs> they were in high spirits. Get, get, you know what he's saying? He's saying, get excited. Get, get, I don't know about you. Listen, listen, listen. He's saying, he's saying, be in high spirits. In other words, be excited about the God you serve. Get, get, get yourself so turned on to the God that you know. I mean... Listen to me tonight. So many Christians walking around and they and they walk around like if like if this God they met has just took away everything they ever wanted. Like they lost their best friend. Listen, you and I, we got everything because of Jesus. And you and I should be so excited to know Christ. As our Lord and Savior. Oh, you're not hearing me tonight. You ought to be so excited 
Man, I know Jesus. I know Jesus. I know Jesus. He's my God. He says, and be in high spirits with trembling. He says, lest you displease him. And, and that word is, is so powerful because uh, we're, I'm going to show you what, what he's talking about in, in just a moment. But, but listen, I think that the one thing that most of us don't want to do, and I think that we do sometimes do it, and sometimes we don't do it willingly, and sometimes we do do it willingly, but we do displease him sometimes. And don't look at me like that, you know, but it's the truth. Uh, we, we all come short sometimes. Come on. And, and, and yet, uh, he, he's, he's, he's tugging. He's tugging at us and he's saying, come on, don't, don't stay there. I, I need you to make your way to this place where you and I can meet. Is there anybody here? I said, is there anybody home tonight? So, so look, look what he says here. Look what he says here in verse 12. This verse is so powerful. He says it like this. He says, kiss the son. Dale un beso al hijo. You know what that is? That's an intimate suggestion. How many know a kiss is an intimate thing? Come on. I said, come on. It isn't just, come on, you're not kissing a board now. You're kissing the sun. It, it's an intimate thing. It's, 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 the Lord is saying something to you and I through this, through this verse here. You, you know, because you, you can ask yourself the question, Oh, how do I kiss the Son? He sits at the right hand of the Father. You see, a kiss is an intimate thing. I, I, I look around. Uh, I, I look around sometimes, and uh, sometimes I look at, at Pastor Ed, and I hit him in the side, and I, I see John carrying Mary's purse. Well, it doesn't look like a purse. It looks like a suitcase. <laughs> I was going to ask somebody for a suitcase a while ago, who, and, and, and he's carrying her books, and, and all that. He's walking like this, and and... And he's caring. He's care, look at this. He's caring for her. All right, uh, that's an intimate thing. I see Alvin back there with his hands around his squeeze. You know, <laughs> they walk down the, the aisle to pray at the altar. And and, and 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 that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. It's an intimate thing. Anybody home? Sometimes we can get into our relationship with the Lord where it becomes stale. And we just begin to go through the moves or through the motions of things. But we're not really intimate with the Lord. We're not really there. You, you know that in the, in the, the let me say, say this to you, the Lord knows the difference. How, how many know Jesus knows the difference? You, you know, when, 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 when Judas came with all those soldiers to arrest Jesus, he told them, the one I kiss, he's the one arrested. That kiss wasn't an intimate kiss. And Jesus knew it. You know what Jesus told Judas? He says, you, you, you mean you betray me with a kiss? That, that kiss was a kiss that it didn't have no, nothing, no feeling in it. It didn't have anything to it. Imagine sometimes we go to church. 
And, and Jesus is here by the Holy Spirit. And, and we walk in, and, 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 and you and I are his people. We're his, we're his sheep. And we're supposed to have that, that intimate relationship with the Lord. And, and we come, and we sit, and, and sometimes we get up, and we go out, and we, we talk more sometimes more intimately with our sister or brother in church than we do with the Lord. I, I want you to see what I'm saying to you. Because sometimes we walk in, and, and, and we leave just as empty as we were when we walked in. We leave the same. Now, now, is that what the Lord wants from us? No. You see, he, he desires that every time you walk in, that you walk out fulfilled and satisfied. Filled. He, he, he wants you to, to be filled with Him. That when you leave this place, there's nothing more for you in your life that's out there because you already have what you need in here. But too many times we come and we walk in knowing we need him. But we walk out the same because we're not we're not doing what we're supposed to do. We're not kissing the sun. Go, go with me. Are you with me today? I, I want you to go with me. Go, go with me. Put, a, put your hand there. Uh, put a marker there on, on Psalms 2. And, and, and go with me to Luke chapter 7. Because you see, in, 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 the, in, those, days, in, the, in those days of the Bible, it, it, was, it, was, it was customary to kiss. It was customary to kiss. You, 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 you kissed your guest. You 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 did certain things to welcome them. And 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 I want you to see I want you to see this with me because because sometimes we do what we should not do and that's why we leave empty and we leave without answers. And and the Lord always wants to give you an answer. Are you with me tonight? I said, are you with me tonight? Let me tell you something. If you can leave filled, if you can leave fulfilled, if you can leave satisfied in your heart that you and him have connected, I mean, he's the ultimate of everything in life. I want to tell you something. You walk out of here with that, you know for with no doubt in your heart, you got the answer. You got what you need in life. He's going to give it to you. Yes, give him praise. Look at this, in, 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 in Luke chapter 7, and we're going to go from verse 36. And I want you to, I want you to see this with me tonight because this, this is so important for you and I. Sometimes we come, we'll come to an altar, and we'll walk up here to the altar, and we just stand around and look around, and then we leave. Listen, some of us, some of us, I, I don't understand it. Some of us, man, we're not even, it, the, the service ain't even over. We're already in our car. Do, do you know that sometimes we miss the greatest things that God has for us because of the way we do things? There, there, listen to me tonight. There are people that should have been here tonight. And you can call them and tell them I said, I don't care. L listen, there are people that should have been here tonight that God probably wanted to touch in a special way. But, but because they're not here tonight, they missed that touch. And let me tell you something, they can't get it back. It could have been something special that he wanted to do for them or speak to them or do something for them. But you can't get that back. So look at this. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to dine with him. He came and 
looked at Jesus. He said, Jesus, I want you to go have supper with me. Come to my house. Come on over. Let's, let's eat together. And he went into the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. Imagine he went over and sat there at the table. Let's go on and look at this. And behold, a woman of the town who was an especially wicked sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at table in the Pharisee's house, brought an, a, 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 an a, a alabaster flask of ointment perfume. I mean, it was, it was, it was so expensive that it was, it was sealed. You couldn't buy that everywhere. It was sealed. And she had it. And she came and she broke it. She broke it open. She began to pour it on him. Uh, are you with me, church? She, you, you know that, that, that alabaster flask? Look, look at this. Represented her heart and life. She wasn't holding nothing back. She was pouring everything she was to him. Giving it all. Giving everything. Is there anybody here? See, sometimes we hang on to things because we think that those other things satisfy us a little bit more than Jesus. But I'm going to tell you something. You're wrong. Okay? Look at this. And standing behind him at his feet, weeping. Here's this woman. Standing there at his feet, weeping. And she began to wet his feet with her tears. She was crying uncontrollably. Just the water just falling on his feet. And she wiped them with the hair of her head. And look at this. And kissed his feet. She, she began to just... She was... Listen to me. A wicked sinner. A, a, a woman that was messed up on drugs and alcohol and sin. And thought that her, 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 her sin was, could satisfy her more than life. But when she saw that Jesus was there, she went there. And look at this. She, she realized that, that who he was and... And she began to intimately, affectionately pour herself out on him. Is there anybody here tonight? Yeah. Look, look, look at this. And kissed his feet. How? Is there anybody can read that up there? What does it say? <laughs> affectionately. Does anybody know what it means to kiss a foot affectionately? Imagine, just, just picture it in your mind, what it means to kiss somebody's foot passionately. Uh, I think me and Pastor Eddie, was it you? We were in Dallas, Texas, at Bob's house, Bob Gutierrez's house. Was it you? And this girl came in, I think it was Brother Anson's sister, she came in. She used to, she used to massage feet and everything and all that. And she wanted to massage our feet and everything. I said, you ain't touching my feet. <laughs> I told Pastor, let her touch your feet. I says, he said, no, she ain't touching my feet either. <laughs> but, but this lady walked in and, and affectionately, listen to me, affectionately began to kiss the sun. She didn't want to be the same. She didn't want to leave that place the way she came in. She wanted to be filled with everything he was. How many times have you come and left the same? Unsatisfied. And I want to tell you something. It's not my problem. It's not my fault. 
Because he's here. I know he's here. He's always been here. He's met us here every time. He's here right now. Ask yourself, how many times have you walked out? And you walked out the same, like you walked in. You don't have to answer me, but I can tell you right now, you didn't kiss the sun. Because had you kissed the sun, you would have never walked out the same. Let me come on this side. This side seems to be upset with me already. If, if you kiss the sun, you won't walk out the same. You can't. You, you can't touch him affectionately. You can't touch him affectionately and, and not have him touch you back. You, you move him. And you can't touch him affectionately and walk out the same. It's impossible for you to be affectionate with a son and not walk out fulfilled and satisfied with your life. And anointed them with the ointment. She poured herself continually on him. Can you imagine? Now, now look at this. Look at this. Let's go on. Look at the next verse. Now, now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, now look at this. This is what we, we, we do to justify why we haven't touched him and why we haven't kissed the son. That's what this man's doing. He's justifying himself. You re remember what I told you. We're going to see it in the moment. It was, it was a custom. It was a custom in those days to kiss your guest. And he's justifying himself. Look at this. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would surely know who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what he's saying, what, what he's doing? And, and, and imagine Jesus says, I want you all to come. I want you all to touch me. How many know we all need to touch him? Yeah, give him praise. Tell the Lord, Lord, I'm going to touch you. But, but see, listen, listen. You don't want, you don't want to just touch him just with an, just an ordinary touch. You want to touch him affectionately. Amen. Con afección. Con, with feeling. With passion. With tears like that woman. That's what we got to do. Pour ourselves out on the Lord. Say, I got to pour myself out on the Lord. So look at this. She is a notorious sinner, a social outcast devoted to sin. Imagine, she knew better than the religious man. Isn't that something? And how many know we should know better? How many of you look at your neighbor and say, we ought to be touching him every day. We ought to be there kissing him every day. We ought to be kissing the Lord every day. 
Yeah, give him praise. Give him praise. Now, 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 I want you to go on. Let's go on with this. Look at this. Let's go on. And Jesus replying, he, he looks at Simon. He looks at the Pharisee. He looks at him because he, he knows what he's doing. And, 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 and look at this. And, and it's easy. Listen, church, it's easy for some of us to sit back there and you see some of these people that are up here weeping and crying and pouring themselves out to the Lord and everything. And it's easy for us to sit back there. Oh, man, there she goes again. But, but you know why we do that? Because we won't do it. And you don't know what the Lord is doing for that woman or that man. Yeah, give him praise. And Jesus replying said to him, Simon... I have something, he says, to say to you. And he answered, teacher, say it. But look, look what he says. A certain lender of money and interest had two debtors. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. When they had no means of paying, he freely forgave them both. Now which of them will love him more? And Simon answered, the one I take it for whom he forgave and canceled more. Can you imagine? You know what he's saying? I forgave this woman. Simon didn't forgive her, but it was in Simon's position anyway. Is there anybody here? How many of you have been forgiven? How many of you have been forgiven? Look, look, look at your neighbor and tell him, you know what, you've been forgiven a lot. What, what you were forgiven was casting you into hell, and you've been forgiven, and you ought to be kissing the sun. You, you ought to be kissing the sun. Yeah, come on, give him praise. Look at this. Simon answered, the one I take it for whom he forgave and canceled more. And Jesus said to him, you have decided correctly. Listen, maybe you weren't as bad as me, and maybe you, I wasn't as bad as you. But no matter what, he canceled out a lot. And so we owe him, we owe him everything. Every one of us owes Jesus everything. So listen to me tonight. So for you and I to walk in here and just go through the motions of being in here without touching Him, without kissing the Son, is, is irreverent. It's disrespectful to the Lord when He has forgiven us everything. Don't make the Son angry, He says. How do we make him angry? How can you make the son angry? He knows what you need. He knows what you're going through. He knows that he's the only one that can help you. And yet we sit there and we won't move. We won't come and kiss him. We walk out the same. We want somebody else to pray for us. You pray for me, brother. Pray for me. I know you got the anointing. Pray for me. It'll go away. And it doesn't go away. You know why it won't go away? Because Jesus wants you to kiss him. Oh, give him praise. It just pleases the Lord. To see us walk in and walk out carrying the same thing. Walk in the next service carrying the same thing and nothing changes. It can change. He's a healer. He's a healer of broken hearts. He's a healer of messed up emotions. Come on, is there anybody here? He's a healer of bodies of sickness. Come on, he's a forgiver of sin. 
He's a deliverer of any bondage. He can do the impossible. He can fix anything. Come on. There's nothing He cannot do. My God is almighty. He is the creator of heaven and earth. And He wants you to kiss Him. We walk in and out like we're already all put together. And, and we're not. Kissing the sun should be a practice that we have every day. Not just once in a while. Praise God. Anybody with me? We we ought to be able to we ought to be able to have that intimacy with the Lord. Listen, intimacy don't start with the kiss, it starts with the heart. You gotta feel it from the heart. You lose that. You lose that. Listen to me. You know, you know what you know what new converts do? Can I tell you something about new converts? <laughs> I, lo- I love to hang around new converts. Because when they get touched by the Lord, they're so in love with God. They can't get enough of him that all they do is kiss him all day. Do you remember when you did that? How many remember when you were like that? I mean, I love to hang around with them because all they want to do is, is, is talk about you. They don't care who's there. They don't care who hears them. They don't care if it's against the law. They don't care, they don't care if they get thrown in jail. They're going to talk about Jesus and they're going to kiss him. They're going, to, they're going to pray to him. They're going to, I mean, they don't care. And I love to hang around with them. <laughs> it's fun. You know, you, know, you, know, you know what they used to say in the old days? You'd get all excited about the Lord. And this is what the Lord is saying. He said, get excited about me. You'd get all excited about him and, 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 and the deacons would come to you and they'd say, won't be long, son. You'll be like the rest of us. I said, oh my God. I said, please, Lord, don't let me get like that. Dead as a doorknob. No feelings, no emotions. When you say praise the Lord, there's nothing that comes out that's really affectionate. Listen, we can't get there. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta be those people that that's excited about Him. That that I mean, that I mean, we just can't get enough. We just want to kiss him and kiss him and kiss him and kiss him. We want to be like those new converts. Even if you've been saved 50 years, they, they got to look at you like you just got saved. Yeah, come on, praise God. And, and look, 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 look at what he says. Look at what he says to him. And Jesus is speaking here, and he says, Then turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? He said, do you see her? When I came into your house, you didn't give me no water. And it was a custom to put water. The roads were dusty. There was no pavement. Everybody that went into anybody's house, they'd have water there, and they'd wash your feet. And they dried them for you. He said, you gave me no water for my feet. 
no, you know what it, you know what he's saying? He's saying, why did Jesus put this in the Word? He said, because this is how we are sometimes with the Lord. We're such in a rush. We're such in a hurry. Haven't you noticed yourself lately? Haven't you? I see some of the ladies, they, they, they think they own this bench. And that one. They stand right here. Like they, they, they don't want nobody to get right here, you know. Like, and I, and I look at them and I say, what the world is that? If, if I were you, I'd be, at the, I'd be up there in front. I'd be right, right, I don't care about getting out. I'd be right there in front. I'd be right there kissing the sun. Forget all this. I'm serious. I understand if, you, if you're an elderly lady and you can't stand up a long time. I understand that. You need a bench. You're welcome to the bench. But some of you don't need a bench. You, it's just, and listen, and we tell you, come up to the front. Come on. Come on, move to the And it's a total rebellion. We, I ain't moving. I, this is my bench. I'm standing right here on this bench. I'd be like telling the ushers, usher, would you carry that lady to the front door here so we can put oil on her? <laughs> I'm serious. It's, it's, listen, we're such in a hurry. We're such in a hurry that we forget who we're here for. We, we, we forgot to leave the kiss. We're quick. Psh. I said, wow. I tell the usher, brother, go call that brother over here. Oh, he left before church was over. He what? Yeah, he's gone. He's already at home, sleeping. <laughs> I said, wow, the Lord had a word for him. Well, okay, we'll just give it back to God. We're, we're, we're such in a hurry. It's not about Jesus. Listen to me, church. It isn't about Jesus. It's about us. We want him to kiss us and kiss us on our time and leave, but we're not we're not here to kiss him. When I was a kid, I ain't gonna tell you. I'll be snitching myself out. When my wife and I met, she used to drive. She, she used to drive me. We used to go to Denny's late at night after church. And she'd drive me down I-25, 15 miles an hour. <laughs> She's shaking her head no. She's saying it was me. See, see when, 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 you're, when you're with somebody that you like to be with, is there anybody here? Amen. You, you, you don't, you don't want to just hurry up. Where are we going? Daddy, shoot, let's go. Hurry up. Get your coffee and your tea. Let's go. No, hombre. No, you, 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 got to, you, got to, you got to leave something there, man. I mean, you got you to gotta impress her. You, do, you got to... You gotta, you know, hold her hand. Look, Alvin's heavy duty, man. Alvin don't—he don't get on glue. He's got super glue on that. <laughs> I mean, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't, you are no, you're in no rush deal. You're not an overnight express. You, you want to take your time, and you don't even want the night to finish, and no. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I ain't going to go no further than that, because if I do, I'll get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but.
But look what he's saying. Look what he's saying. Look what he's saying. I mean, then we meet him. Huh? Remember when you when you kissed that girl the first time in your whole life? The girl, the first girl you ever liked, or the or the guy you liked? Huh? Slobbered all over him. <laughs> and you didn't want it to stop. <laughs> and it was just drooling all over. <laughs> Come on. Hey, hey, listen, listen. You know, you know I'm trying, you know I'm telling you the truth. I ain't saying no I know lies. The Lord knows I'm telling you the truth. And you weren't in no hurry. You weren't in no hurry. You had to go work the next day. And you, it didn't matter to you. It didn't matter to you. You'd, go, you'd stay up all night for that lady and, and go to work all, all this day now. Well, I think the Lord is worth more than all that. Man, we're such in a hurry. Man, I wish they would hurry. Man, I want that man. man. I wish they would hurry. You know, wow, look at this. And, and, and the Lord's waiting. He said, wow, I wish they would just come and get a hold of me and kiss me and caress me. I wish they would be like this woman and pour their lives out on me and not worry about the time, but just, just be there for me and with me. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. That takes time, church. I mean, me and Edmund have a hard time wiping the, the Lord's feet with our hair, but... But look, look at this. You, you gave me, he's telling him, you gave me no kiss. Said, you, you, you didn't even give me, it was customary. And he says, you didn't even kiss me, you didn't even greet me, you didn't even care. Look at this. You gave me no kiss, but she from the moment, look at this, from the moment I came in, has not ceased. From the moment I came in, she has not stopped intimately. Look at that, intimately, to kiss my feet and caressingly. Look at this, kiss my feet tenderly and caressingly. And look at this, and you did not anoint my head with cheap, ordinary oil. You didn't even go get some olive oil from somewhere or cut liver oil or nothing. <laughs> look at this. But she has anointed my feet with costly, rare perfume. She gave me the best. Amen. How many know the Lord wants the best? When you come to this altar, He wants the best from you. <laughs> how many understand that tonight? How do, I, how do I kiss his feet? How do I do it? Right here at the altar. You pour yourself out to him. You caress him. You, you, you touch him. You let him touch you. You, you kiss him. You, come on, are you with me today? I don't know about you. I don't know how you do it, but when, uh, last night I was home by myself. And I was, I was there just hearing the Spanish worship. And I, all of a sudden, I just started worshiping the Lord, loving Him, just telling Him, Lord, I love you. You know, I need you so much in my life. So grateful that I'm not even dead, Lord. I'm so grateful for the touch that you gave me. And, and I went on and on and on. 
Are you with me, church? And I could feel this, the presence of the Holy Spirit there. I, I don't know. I don't know how. how I don't know how, what you do. I don't know how you feel. But but God is waiting for the church. He said, kiss him. Kiss the son. Lest he become angry with you. And he gets angry because he knows that he could touch you in such a way and he could help you. He could satisfy your life. He could, he could fulfill you. He could do everything for you. And yet you desire to walk away. And I see that. You know, for a long time, I used to see people walk out. They used to walk out of here. During altar call, altar call would come, and they, they thought that was the the key to let's go meet our family at the restaurant. And I used to think to myself, "Wow, these people are lost. They're far from God, and they think they're right, and yet they don't have no intimacy with Him." Are you with me? He said, kiss the son. Kiss him. Let's go back to that verse, verse 12 in chapter 2. Look what he says. He says, kiss the son. Pay homage to him. Impurity. Lest he be angry and you perish in the way. For soon shall his wrath be kindled. O oh, blessed, happy, and fortunate, and to be envied are all those who seek refuge and put their trust in him. He's the only one. How many know he's the only one? Yeah. Look at your neighbor and tell him, listen, if there's anyone worth kissing, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. I was hearing this morning that they, they believe that in our country alone, 159,000 doctors will walk away from practice. And I thought about it. And I said, but our God's a healer. Our God will heal. He'll either take us home or heal us. How many understand that? And, and you and I need to draw closer to him than ever. Than ever. We need, to, we need to kiss the son. We need to have that intimacy with him. We need to we need to be able to caress him and, and pour ourselves out to him. Yeah. And take our time. Don't be in such a hurry. I see so many. Listen, in two minutes, you're done talking to the Lord. And I say to myself, wow, that's heavy duty. That's, that's heavy. When I talk to the Lord, I don't finish. I have a lot to say. Huh? I know you got a lot to say. How I many know you got a lot to say? You'd never finish in two minutes. But we're in a hurry. I want you to stand with me. We're going to do something here tonight. We're going to kiss the sun. I'm going to invite every one of you to come. Please, don't park yourself on my bench. 
unless you're a senior citizen and you can't help yourself. I want to share something with you as, as you come. Move up, move up as close as you can. And if, if there's no room over there, move inside this way so we can fill up the ends here. Let me, let me share this with you as you come. Listen to me. I have seen the Lord meet my needs, heavy needs, miraculously out of intimacy. <laughs> out of intimacy with Him. If, if, if you can understand that if you, if you will become intimate with the Lord, if you'll kiss the Son by pouring yourself out to Him and desiring Him, there's, there's nothing, this is the Word of God says, nothing He will withhold. From the righteous. There's not a need he won't fulfill. He'll do it. He'll, he'll, he'll help you. He'll provide. I've seen him provide jobs for me when I didn't have jobs. Out of intimacy. Just by getting along with God and kissing Him. I see God open doors. I've seen God answer prayer that no one thought was possible. Out of intimacy. Can you, can you imagine, church? Judas, look at this. Judas came to Jesus with a kiss, but it was a different kiss. It was a dead, old, dried-up kiss. Had no feeling, no emotion. And Jesus knew it. And Jesus told him, you betray me with a kiss, Judas, because he knew that a kiss meant affection. And, and you know, you know, you know that Jesus, if Judas would have ran to the cross after he betrayed him, if he'd have ran to the cross and asked him for forgiveness, Jesus would have forgave him. But he never ran there. He took off in another direction and hung himself. Every, every, everything you and I will need, listen to me, everything you and I will need this new year and even in 2015, listen, a lot of things are going to change. Not in, not in the Lord, but in the government, in life. And you and I are going to need our God to help us. And he will. He will. Out of intimacy. Kiss the son. Kiss him. This woman couldn't stop. She just 
fell in love with him and didn't want to stop. So I'm going to ask you tonight, because a lot of you, we, we talk to God in two minutes, we're gone. I'm going to ask you to not do that. I'm going to ask you to stay at this altar with the Lord. Talk to him. Pour your heart. Listen, pour your heart to the Lord. You can't pour it to me because I'm not the Lord. Pour it to the Lord. The Lord is here. And if you talk to Jesus, he's going to answer you. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for all of us to be intimate with him. And if you'll do that, believe me, he will meet your needs. I know he will. I know he will. Amen? We're going to sing that song. And, and I, I want you, as, as they sing it, I want you to talk to him. And they're going to sing it so that nobody hears your words. Because you know what? Sometimes we don't talk to God because we don't want nobody to hear us. Or well, nobody will hear you. The music will drown them out. The only one that will hear you is Jesus. If there's, if there's a sin that we're committing, that's, that we're holding on to, that we think is better than Jesus, bring it under the blood. He'll forgive you. He'll take it out of the way. And you can walk free with God. Amen? So lift your hands right to where you're at. Remember, you're, 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 He's your God, and you're going to be intimate with Him. Hallelujah. Father, we come to You. And we come in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, tonight, we ask You. We ask You, Lord, to touch Your people. We ask you, Lord, to move by your Holy Spirit. Father, we pray that you, God, would meet every need they have as they kiss you tonight. As they pour out their heart to you, God. Would you meet their needs? Would you fulfill their life? Would you satisfy their soul? Hallelujah, Lord. Father, we call out to you tonight. Have your way. My God, you are the answer, Father, to all my, my life. And there's no one greater than you, Lord. You feel and satisfy every part of our life, Lord. Father, in the name of 
Hallelujah. Oh, pour your heart out. Come on, pour your heart out to the Lord. He's the, he's the lover of your soul. Thank you. 